Hey guys, Aaron here. For about a year, the only 16 millimeter camera I had was this Keystone 1930s camera. But after looking on eBay for many months and trying to find the right price, I found a 60 millimeter pillared Bolex H16 camera. These go on eBay for like 200 to $500, even for like really used conditions. But I found this one, which was relatively good condition for $190, even like $60 shipping, that was 250, but that was the cheapest I was ever gonna find it. So I bought it, or my parents bought it for lots of good reasons. So today I'm gonna show you how to use a 60 millimeter Bolex, and I'm gonna show you the lenses that I have for this camera. Okay, so here is my Bolex camera. So let's start with the very basics. This is a wind-up camera. There's no battery-operated motor. So in order to wind up the camera, you unhook this arm, attach it here, and start winding. You have to flip this switch that engages the motor, and then you can start winding. You can wind it until it stops, and that's when the motor is twisted as hard as it can, and then you can place the arm back down here. The frame rates on my camera have five settings, 8 frames per second, 16 frames per second, 24, 32, and 64 frames per second. This is 8 frames per second, this is 16, this is 24, this is 32, and this is 64. This dial up here counts the frames. The first circle is one to 50 frames and the second circle is in the hundreds of frames. Make sure you wind the frame counter back to zero to be aware of every single frame that you've shot. For this switch in the bottom, switching it to the right is for continuous running. And switching it to the left is for single frame exposures. This switch, the I stands for interval and the T stands for time. The I is a single frame exposure, which is about 40th of a second. And the T is for long exposure single frames. And we have a frame counter here, which lets you know how much film you used. This Bolex camera has a reflex viewfinder. This can be taken off to show where the reflex mirror is. This reflex viewfinder is only showing what this mirror is seeing. So you just focus and change the aperture in this lens, and then you switch it to over the actual 16 millimeter film. You don't wanna record and then accidentally expose nothing. So that was what all these dials and switches do. So now I'm going to show you how to load the camera. This is what the inside looks like. I don't have any 60 millimeter that's out of the box yet, so I'm going to use this leader film. For this old Bolex camera, it has to be double per film because these reels have double of the perforations. And if you use single per film, it won't work. So let's thread it up. You first unhook this part. Then you unhook this part and push it back in. Then you have the end of the reel and then you put it into one of these slots here. Make sure it's wound tight. Normally this would be in dim lights because you don't want to expose any more film than you would have to. And then you would advance the film a little bit to make sure, to make sure it's working. Well, not that much, but Oh yeah, that's good. And then you would place the back back on, maybe tape around the edges, then have light leaks anywhere, and then, and then you're ready to shoot. Okay, so now let's talk about the lenses I have on this camera. The smaller lens is the lens that I got with this 1930s Keystone camera, which is a Focus Woolensack Sin Velo Stigmat. That's probably the most American pronunciation in the world. So let me try the German name. Woolensack Sin Velo Stigmat. Yeah, let's just move on. This one has an aperture of f2.7 to 16. This one doesn't have an exact focus ring. You just unscrew this and then, and right before you, you know, unscrew the whole lens, that is, you know, macro focus, but I don't know exactly. And this big lens I got to just $30 on eBay, which is a cheap C-mount lens from Japan. This one has an aperture of 1.4 all the way to completely closed and i've tested it and about right after that dot is where it's just a pinpoint and maybe i can point at the sun and even get some shots this one has a wide angle or a telephoto lens the wide angle on this lens is almost fisheye and the telephoto is you know zoomed in but not even as zoomed in as this lens but then i got this a Canon EOS to C-mount lens. So with this, I can mount any of my Canon EOS lenses to a 16 millimeter camera. 
but this has never happened before, a modern lens on a 1930s Keystone camera. Now since these modern lenses uses electricity from the Canon camera to change the focus, a lens like this can't change the focus on its own. That is, except for this telephoto lens. This has an actual focus ring, so this camera can't focus by itself. And another thing about these electronic lenses is that it needs electricity to change the aperture, which means this is stuck at 3.5, the widest aperture setting, or 6.5 when it's all the way zoomed out. So in order to shoot outside, I would need to use a ND filter, a neutral density filter. These are basically sunglasses for the lens, except they stop light in specific amounts, like one stop or three stops. Also, I have a macro focus camera. This is the camera I do all my stop motion on. This macro camera can't change focus without electricity, but it remains fixed to the focus the camera shot it at. So I could technically do macro photography with this lens. or maybe even stop motion. Yeah, this isn't gonna work because I've tried this with Super 8 film. Click this video, it has really good stop motion. But animating stop motion on Super 8 film is really hard. It's really hard not having a screen to look at. Always having to bend down and look through the viewfinder. You'd have to line up the shot through this lens and then you have to move it down to this way and that will just mess up the whole shot. And this also doesn't have a trigger release hole. I would have to manually move the camera every time I take a picture and that'll jiggle it slightly. So let's not animate on 16 millimeter just yet. So now you have everything set. You have your Bolex all wound up. You have your new modern lens on it, but then you go to it. So you put out. So you have everything set. You have your Bolex all wound up. You have a new modern lens on it. So you go to put it on a tripod. But then you find, oh no. This camera isn't the normal fourth of an inch screw that's on every tripod ever made. This is a half an inch screw. You'll probably find half an inch screw mounts somewhere on Amazon, but I don't have any of those tripods right now. So my dad made this. This is a half an inch screw mount that can fit into this. So I can put this camera onto this tripod. Or you could buy this. This is a fourth of an inch to half an inch screw adapter, which means this can be put on any fourth of an inch tripod. Now it changes into a half an inch screw. So now you're ready to start shooting. And in fact, I've already shot some 60 millimeter film through this camera, but I haven't got it developed yet. I'm gonna send them off to be developed and scanned so I can see them in crisp 4K quality. Or I would have wasted $200 on a camera that doesn't even work. No, no, it did work. I, I did put the film through it and you saw that it worked, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's totally gonna work, right? It's, it's totally gonna work. It's not like I've wasted like $200 and, and then $70 on the Ektachrome and then and then like $50 to get it developed and then, and then another 50 to get it scanned in 4K. Yeah, it, no, it's fine, it's fine. Whoa.